Hey, good evening, Harvest Time Bible Church Online. Thanks so much for being willing to join me for follow. Follow me as we follow Christ. Isn't that the greatest thing to be able to do is to follow Jesus Christ? There is nothing greater. It is the greatest thing that we can do with our life. It's the greatest thing we can do with our time. It's the greatest thing we can do with our effort. Everything that we can do, the greatest thing is to follow Jesus and reflect him to others around us. And so that's what this is all about. It's about how can I better reflect Jesus? How can I better follow Jesus? How can I better be someone who is a disciple of Jesus? Because again, that's really the goal for every single one of us, right? The Bible says, Jesus even said to us, go make disciples, not converts, not religious zealots, disciples. You and I are disciples of Jesus Christ. We have a relationship with him. And so we want to strive to grow in that. We want to strive to understand what it means to follow him more and more every single day. And so that's what I want to do is help you grow in your faith as you help me grow in my faith by your faith. This is not ideal. It's not, it, it's not the best way, but it is a way. And uh, again, I mean, obviously, I, I would much rather be just talking to you in person and be with you in person. But you know what? Sometimes we have to use different things, different methods, different ways. And, uh, and this just happens to be one of those. And so thank you for being willing to uh, join us online. I'm so thankful for our online ministry. So thankful for what God is doing in it and through it and uh, is continuing to grow um, the impact of the gospel through it. And so we give praise for that. Hey, so some ways that you can be on mission. Um, always want to talk about being on mission. Why? Because being on mission is about following Jesus. Um, it's about fulfilling the great commandment, the great commission. It's about really fulfilling what God has given us in his word for us to do. And so there's lots of different ways to do that. You can check out our online bulletin at htbc.church. There's all sorts of different ways in that bulletin that you can get involved. I know many of you, you do things on your own and, and you get other people involved and you're you're making a, a difference for Christ wherever you're at. And that's that's really being the church every day, everywhere, isn't it? Is is that we're going and making a difference wherever we go, whatever we do, uh, and whatever we're involved in, we're always getting more and more people. And so um, we want to encourage you to be on a mission. One of the ways you can do that, maybe you're wondering, how can I do that? What can I do to, to be more involved at Harvest Time? What, what's Harvest Time all about? What is, what is this church, uh, this local church body all about? Well, starting, uh, it's not going to start this week. It was originally going to start this week, but um, we're going to have to move it back a week. And so it'll start the 15th of August. And actually, it's just going to be two weeks, the 15th and the 22nd. It'll be at 930 in the Family Life Center, and it's called Starting Point. And uh, it's a great way for you to learn about our church. It's a great way for you to get involved and think about the next steps uh, in your journey. And uh, so we encourage you to get involved. You can sign up at the Providing Hope Cafe on Sundays, or you can sign up online. And uh, again, we would encourage you to do that and be a part of that. Hey, mission trips. Awesome, awesome. Mission trips are always such a great thing. I strongly encourage you, you need to go on a mission trip. If you are physically able to go, you need to go. Take a family vacation. Do it as a family. We did it as a family one year. Awesome. Impacted my kids, has still impacted my kids um, to this very day. It has impacted my life to this very day. But there is a trip coming up in January to Honduras. And uh, this Sunday night at five o'clock in the Family Life Center, Jim and Regina Holloway will be um, leading a team again back to Honduras in January. And there's going to be an information meeting uh, this coming Sunday. So I encourage you to go and be a part of it. Just go and listen. Just go and hear what it is that they have to share. And maybe God will say, you know what? I want you to go. I want you to be a part of it. Maybe I'll tell you not to. I don't know. But you don't know unless you try. So try and see what happens. Hey, seniors, those of you that are 55 and older, a couple events coming up for you. August the 14th, we're going to be having Five Alive at the Pizza Ranch in Sterling. And that'll be at 5 o'clock at the Pizza Ranch in Sterling. 
Uh, if you are wanting more information about that, you can call Sharon Kremnitzer, 815-677-1184, and uh, she would be glad to give you more details. Then on August the 21st, we're going to be having the Senior Olympics. That's right, Food Fun Fellowship, starting at 10 a.m. It's free, join in the games, teams of four. Um, you can come and cheer on your favorite team, um, but we need people to sign up. Please get signed up. Sign-up sheets are outside the Providing Hope Cafe on Sundays. Um, events will include things like beanbag toss, uh, mini golf, ping pong toss, etc. Nothing hard, just come and have fun and enjoy the day. Hey ladies, we have a great thing coming up for you on September the 10th. 9.30 to 12.30 here at the church. Jill Savage is going to be here with an organization called Moms in Prayer. And uh, you don't have to be a mom in order to come. Just if you're a lady and want to come, we encourage you to come. The cost is $20. Um, and we ask you to sign up. You can sign up at the Providing Hope Cafe. Uh, or you can sign up at the link that is in the bulletin. Again, great opportunity to come and be a part of that event on, the, on that Friday morning. Learning Link Ministry is a great ministry. So excited about it. It is meeting the needs of helping kids academically. And uh, we are looking for people who are teachers, mentors, tutors. Maybe you've been um, uh, a class grandma um, and uh, or grandpa. And uh, you've kind of been missing that because last year you couldn't do it and you want to do it. This is going to, it's once a week, Wednesdays, 4.30 to 6 here in the Family Life Center. And uh, we need people who are willing to be a part of it. You don't have to do it every week. You can do it once a month, every other month, whatever works for you. But we do ask you to get signed up and uh, please sign up. There will be a sign-up sheet outside the Providing Hope Cafe. Uh, or you can sign up online. Or if you want to know more information, call Cindy Haas at 815-499-3696. Again, all awesome opportunities to get involved. So we encourage you to do that, be involved, be a part of it. Hey, biggest way you can be on mission is to pray. Pray for people. Continue to lift up Linda Gwen. Uh, she is home and improving, but still has quite a bit of pain. Micah Jansen had open heart surgery on Monday. He is doing well, but they have found a few other complications um, with his heart. So I ask you guys to be praying for Micah, continue to lift him up. Jody Knapp continues to improve. Um, the uh, Garza family, if you would be praying for them, a few of them have come down with COVID and uh, Hope in particular has been hospitalized uh, up in Loyola and I ask you guys to be praying for that family. Paul and Gail Laird. Paul continues to be um, in a facility uh, up in Rockford as he's gaining strength and mobility. I ask you guys to be continuing to pray for them, lifting them up before the Lord. Jessica Johnson continues to have chemo for uh, brain. She has a brain tumor, uh, brain cancer, and I ask that you guys would be uh, lifting her up before uh, the Lord uh, as well. And then will you pray for our dream team, mission team, that it's at, they're at the Dream Center all this week. And uh, ministering there, we have six ladies from the church that are there and uh, excited for them. Glad they got to go. What an awesome opportunity. I ask you guys to be praying for them and lifting them up before the Lord as well. Hey, take a moment right now and just ask God to speak to your heart. Go ahead and do that now. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thanks for the opportunity we have to grow in you, to follow you, to learn more and more what it means to be in love with your son, Jesus. God, thanks for the opportunity we have to be on mission. Whether it's doing these different ways of, of putting our, our spiritual gifts or our talents that you've given us into practice, or it's just praying. God, thanks for the ability and the great privilege and awesome responsibility and power there is in prayer. 
God, we ask that you would just be with those that we've mentioned, be with those that we haven't, so many needs. God, we ask that you would just guide and direct in each of their lives. Lord, thanks for your love. Thanks for our time tonight. I ask that you would bless it, guide us, and direct it in every way. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Well, we've been talking about being the church every day, everywhere. I know the past two Sundays haven't been able to be with you, but so thankful for Miles and Niall and their willingness to uh, bring the word to you guys. And uh, I know just in communicating with them and talking with people that uh, both of them were able to encourage you in your walk and encourage you as you continue to think about being the church every day, everywhere. One of the things I want to bring back up again is the whole thing of what Ephesians 5.18 says. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul is directing this as a, a, honestly, it's an imperative. It's a command. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's an action that's on our part. You and I allow the Holy Spirit to fill us, fill us to the point of overflowing. That's an action that that we take, an action that we do as we surrender ourselves to the leading and the guiding and directing of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Bible tells us that you and I are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that when we put our faith and trust in Jesus, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit as a promise of our salvation, as a promise of our redemption. The Holy Spirit comes and indwells us, takes up residence in our soul, in our heart. That's what happens at the moment that you put your faith and trust in Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes and indwells you, and you receive all of the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the thing, though. The Holy Spirit does not receive all of you. That happens over time. That's the process of sanctification. Surrendering ourselves to the Holy Spirit. That's the part of filling, being filled with the Holy Spirit is our surrendering to him. Now you say, why is that important? Ephesians chapter 3 tells us why. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than you ask or imagine, listen to this, according to the spirit that is at work within you. To to Jesus Christ be glory in the church through all generations, forever and ever. So, Why is it important to be filled with the Spirit? Because it's important to be filled with the Spirit because the goal is to bring glory to Jesus in the church through all generations forever and ever. Being the church every day, everywhere requires us to be surrendered to the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus even said it. If you want to follow me, deny yourself, take up the cross, follow me daily. What is he talking about? He's talking about denying ourselves. He's talking about surrendering ourselves, surrendering to him and letting him guide and direct our life. You will not be the church every day, everywhere. If, if all you're dependent upon is behavioral change, God wants to change your soul. God wants to transform your life. Do I think behavior change is, is a good thing? Absolutely. If someone has, I I mean, I think about my kids. We we, we didn't just let them grow up on their own and and never discipline them, never try to correct their behavior, never try to help them learn good behavior. That's insane. Why would I do that? That's not even loving. The most loving thing I can do is to discipline them, is to correct their behavior, is to help help them choose good behavior. But that's not it. That's not it alone. I can't change their heart. Why am I correcting them? Why am I helping them? Because my ultimate goal is that they would put their faith and trust in Christ and that God would transform their heart. Because ultimately, a transformed heart leads to transformed behavior, leads to filling of the Spirit, leads to 
glorifying Jesus in the church every day, everywhere, for every generation, forever and ever. And you and I get to play a part in that. You and I get to play a, a beautiful, incredible part in that. We even see that as we continue to look at Acts. Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, Acts 1, Jesus says that his disciples wait for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God is going to come. I'm leaving you. The Holy Spirit, the helper, is coming. Wait for him. Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit comes. The Holy Spirit tells us in, in verse 3, it, it, that the Holy Spirit rested on each one of them. That's the idea of in the indwelling Holy Spirit, that in this Holy Spirit takes up residence in your life. He rests, he sets on them. He becomes one with them. Why? Because he takes up residence in their soul. Just like you and I, this, again, is a transition period, so don't look at this and, and make out this as the doctrine of how we receive the Holy Spirit. The, the way we receive the Holy Spirit is different than this. They had already encountered Jesus, put their faith and trust in Jesus, but had not yet received the Holy Spirit. You and I, the Bible says, the moment that we put our faith and trust in Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes, takes up residence in our life. He sits on us. He rests on each one of us. We get all of him. He doesn't get all of us. That's why in verse four, it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the thing. Every single one of you, including myself, are filled with something. We're filled with something. Filled by someone. What are you being filled with? What are you being filled by? Here's the thing. There's a real easy way to test that. What do you think about the most? What do you talk about the most? What do you think about the most? What do you talk about the most? And you know what I found? Is that it's moment by moment. Isn't it? I mean, again, if my, if my whole goal is behavior change, I don't know about you, but here's what I know about my behavior. My behavior is finicky. AKA exercise. Do I love, I love to exercise. I love to go out for a walk. I love to go out for a bike ride. I love to go for a hike. I love to lift weights, love to do it. Love doing, it. I love it when I'm doing it. I love how I feel afterwards. I, I love how it makes me feel. But you know how many times, even though I know that's the behavior that I want, how many times I've woken up in the morning and gone, I don't feel like today. Even though I know this is this is how this is going to affect me. I, this is how this is going. To, this is the effect it's going to bring in my life. I don't feel like it today. I'm tired. That's too much effort. Why? Because my behavior is finicky. It's finicky. Up and down. Roller coaster all over the place. All the time. Uh, maybe you're not like that. Maybe your behavior is always great. Maybe you're just a wonderful human being who never does anything wrong. I don't know. That's not me. That's just not me. Because why? I struggle with my sin nature. Still. I still struggle with it. And it's not natural for me to be like, you know what? I just can't wait to lift weights. I can't wait to run. I can't wait to go out ex exercise. I love it. I know the effects it has on my life. I know that it's good. But my behavior, my behavior gets in the way. But here's the thing. God didn't come to change my behavior. He came to change my heart. And when he changes my heart, he changes my behavior. And he changes my motivation. And he helps me to understand, you know what? If I exercise, that is an act of self-discipline, which is actually an act of Holy Spirit discipline. What are the fruit of the Spirit? One of them is to be self-controlled. That doesn't mean you control yourself. That means the Holy Spirit of God controls yourself. And I realize, oh my gosh, I need to exercise whether I feel like it or not. I need to love my neighbor whether I feel like it or not. I need to go to church whether I feel like it or not. I need to read the Bible whether I feel like it or not. See, if, if, if all we ever did was just 
acting on her behavior? I don't know about you, but there'd be a lot of things I would never do that I know I need to do. But I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do immeasurably more than he can than I can ever even ask or imagine according to the spirit that's at work within me. If I'm letting the Holy Spirit of God fill me up, are you letting the Holy Spirit of God fill you up? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. If we're going to be the church every day, everywhere, if we're going to make disciples, if we're going to do what God wants us to do, we've got to surrender to the Holy Spirit of God in our life. Because it's not my power. It's not my strength. Not by my might, but by his. It's by his. Some trust in chariots and horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Do we? Or are we more trusting in chariots and horses? Are we more trusting in other people? Other things? What are you being filled with? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it's all about bringing glory to Jesus. What does that mean? What does the word glory mean or glorified mean? It means to put the spotlight on. So here's what happens. When I surrender myself to God and I allow the Holy Spirit of God to fill me up, it causes in me to turn the spotlight onto Jesus. And it 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 magnifies, it glorifies, it brings him to the forefront. That's what it means. So if I'm glorifying Jesus, he is being brought into the spotlight of my life. Not me. Not my accomplishments. Not 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 my personality, not my anything. Mm-mm. Jesus. That, that's what if that's not what life's all about, I, I, I give up. I give up. What, what, what on earth are we here for if it's not about glorifying Jesus? Because it certainly isn't. It, it, it certainly isn't about me getting all I want. <laughs> it, it certainly isn't about me um, fulfilling all my desires. Because guess what? Won't happen. Won't happen. It won't happen. It, it just, it won't. You can never fill all your desires. You, you can never fill, you, you can never get everything you want. Because as soon as you do, there's something more that you want. I mean, our whole society, our whole culture is being built on being dissatisfied with what comes out tomorrow. It's the truth. I mean, why do you think everything always, get the latest phone, get the latest computer, get the latest this, the latest that, you gotta have a bigger home, you gotta have a bigger that, you gotta have a, because we can't satisfy ourselves. What, What was it, the Rolling Stones, I think? I can't get now? I can't get no satisfaction. I tried and I tried and I tried, but I just can't get no. You know why? Because it can't be found outside of Jesus. Can't be found outside of Jesus. Oh, we can try. We can try all we want. Go for it. Lots of people are. Tons of people are. Most people are. Striving to go for it and yet not ever feeling fulfilled. You won't. You won't apart from Jesus. But we still strive to let ourselves be filled by everything else except for the Holy Spirit. It's interesting, isn't it? The Bible says to us, be filled with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say be filled with religion. No. It doesn't say be filled with your job. It doesn't say be filled with your family. 
Bible doesn't say be filled with love. Oh, I know that's 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 the big thing right now, right? Love is love. Just love whatever, do whatever you want. Love. There ain't no satisfaction in that. Am I saying that love's wrong? No. Am I saying that family's wrong? No. Am I saying your job is wrong? No. Am I saying that 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 exercise is wrong? No. But that's not the end all. Jesus is the end all, my friend. And his desire for us is to be the church every day, everywhere, so that he is glorified. That's that is what we need to be striving for in our lives. My friend, thanks. Thanks for listening, putting up with my ranting and raving. I appreciate it. I'm just trying to share my heart. I'm just trying to, to help you grow in your faith. Thanks for being willing to help me grow in mine. I appreciate it. Hey, my friend, let's pray. God, you're good. Thanks for your love. Thanks for your son, Jesus. Thanks for what you're doing in our lives. Thanks for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, have an awesome evening. Have a great rest of the week. And as always, know this, you are.